In this video, I'm gonna show you how to monitor network connectivity. That is whether or not you have a network that is available on the device to connect to and whether that, that available network has internet. So by the end of this video, we're gonna build a class that can output a live data class that can output a Boolean that denotes whether or not you have internet connectivity within your app. Now, suppose you're building an application and you want this application to work when there's no network connection. So in order for that to work, you need something that caches the data. And that's what, what I I have designed here in this application. So if I do a search, um, it's gonna you know find the recipes from the network and then insert them into the cache. So what happens when the network goes down? Well, we want this thing to work just as if the network was up. So let's turn off Wi-Fi and let's also turn off the cellular data and then let's take a look. So right away at the top, you can see that at the top there's like this banner that says no network connection. Now the app still works. I can still you know perform searches and everything, but instead of hitting the network, it's hitting the cache. So this is the kind of this is kind of the idea ideal behavior that you want in an offline first application. Also notice if I was to then turn back on cellular data, boom, that banner goes away and the app is still functioning as it was before. There's just no like notification up there telling the user that there's no network connection. So obviously when there is no network connection, uh, you know, the app will still look like it's working, but actually all that it's doing is it's hitting the cache and it's not hitting the network at all. So notice here when I, when I search for beef, the only recipes that come up are the ones that are in the cache. Whereas if I was to then enable the network and I was to, you know, perform that same, that same search, I should get a whole bunch of recipes now because there there is a network connection that's available. So it took a second there, it looked like the network was kind of, must have been kind of uh, setting itself up, but you did actually get results eventually. So like I said in that little demo there, having this sort of behavior is pretty ideal for almost any application. You want the app to work if there's no network connection or at least appear to be working in like a normal, in some sort of a normal way when there's no network connection. So you do this by, you know, monitoring the network connection, letting the user know when there's no network connection, and then obviously caching data so that you have something to display when there is no connection. So in order to monitor the network connection in sort of a, a live data-ish way, um, that's what I'm gonna be showing you in this video. So let's go take a look at the class that I built. And I've been working on this. I didn't build this alone, by the way. I've been bouncing ideas off of somebody in my Discord channel. Um, shout out to Alex. Alex Mason, who's been, you know, we've been talking back and forth about this for, uh, you know, the last kind of half of yesterday. And then this morning we were discussing this. So shout out to you. Thanks a lot. We worked together and came up with this pretty cool class for monitoring connectivity. So here is what we ended up coming up with, or here's my, my variation of it. So we call it connection live data. And he came up with the idea of emitting or building a class that extends live data so it could be observed. Originally, I had something that was, uh, you know, monitoring the connective connection state, but then just setting a mutable state value and observing that. But I think this is much better. It's much better because in order to use the API that's available for monitoring the network, so the you know the connection manager or the, here's the connectivity manager and also the connect network callback, in order to use those properly, you have to register a callback and then unregister a callback when uh, when it's no longer needed. So you can see here, if we're extending the live data class, we have two override functions available to us on active and on inactive, meaning there is somebody observing on active and there's nobody observing on inactive. So that's a perfect place to register these callbacks. So we register our network callback inside of on active. And then as soon as there's no more observers on inactive gets called and we unregister the callback. It's really like the perfect fit, I think, for using this uh, connectivity manager and the the network callback. Now, I'm not going to explain how this stuff works. I'm not going to, you know, code this out and, uh, you know, explain everything line by line. Instead, what I'm going to do is just kind of show you generally how this thing is working. And then you could just literally copy paste this into your project. So there's really no need for me to kind of go through it uh, in detail. First, let's, uh, let's actually use this thing and then we'll come back and I'll just kind of talk about how it works. So to use this thing, we are going to create a late init variable and call it uh, connection live data. And there you can see I'm using that connection live data class. It has to be a, a late init variable because these uh, network call, the network callback and the connectivity manager, you can't use them until on create is called in the activity. So that's why we have to initialize it here. So I'm gonna do connection live data and then just set it equal to connection live data and pass the context, which is just the activity. So now I can get that Boolean. I can just go inside of, uh, you know, inside of our composable 
and I have to have a special dependency for this, which I'm going to show you in a second. I can do, let's just say, you know, is network available and set that equal to connection live data dot observe as state. And this is a Jetpack Compose thing, this observe as state thing. It's, uh, it's, it's how you observe live data inside of a composable, essentially. And in order to use this observe as state function, you need a special dependency, and that is the Jetpack Compose runtime dash live data I guess you would call this an artifact. You need this in order to use that, uh, that observe as state function. Now, if you weren't using Jetpack Compose, this would be, oh, this should be actually down below on create, my bad. Now, if you weren't using Jetpack Compose and you wanted to observe the Boolean, you could just do connection as live data, observe, pass an observer, and uh, there you go, you have the Boolean. So you would have like your is network available, avail, a bull boolean right here and then you could update your ui however you wanted to do so that's how you could use it if you were not using jetpack compose but we are using jetpack compose so i'm going to get rid of that we're going to use observe as state and then pass this is network available boolean and we also need to call dot value on that to get the value so let's uh ooh, why is this giving me a warning oh it says it can't be null because i didn't pass an initial value let's set an initial value of false here that way it's not nullable Okay, so let's run this and let's just kind of experiment and see how this is working. We'll turn on Wi-Fi, turn off Wi-Fi, turn on data, turn off data, all that stuff. And then I'm gonna come back and talk about this class and how the you know connectivity manager works and how the network callback works. Okay, so here's our little sort of sample application. Down below it says we have a valid connection and then there's that check mark. So now what if I turn off the cellular data? So watch in the background down there that this is gonna be changing in real time. So as soon as I click this, boom, it says no network connection. So that's, that's exactly what you want in your application. You can tell your users there's no network connection. And also maybe you can use this in your use cases. You could say like, you could pass the connectivity uh, Boolean value to your use cases or whatever, wherever you needed it, and you know change them uh, relative to whether or not there's a network connection. So now what if we turn this thing back on? Well, boom, we get valid connection, great. Now let's try turning this off and we'll just turn on Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi takes a couple of seconds to uh, kind of connect. There you can see the Wi-Fi signal and down below it says valid connection. So that's good. Let's try cellular data in addition to Wi-Fi. That looks good. Let's turn off data, still valid connection. That all looks good. Now let's try turning off Wi-Fi. There it said no connection for a brief second. That's because it's it's, it's uh, well, it has to do with how the connectivity manager works, which I'll talk about in a second. And then it says back to valid connection. So everything is working as we expect here, basically. So now how does this connectivity manager thing work and this uh, connectivity manager network callback? So let's, um, let's scroll to, I guess, this part here. So this is the first kind of step in this whole procedure. You need to get a connectivity manager object. And you can get that by doing context, get system service, and then passing the, con uh, the, the constant connectivity service and then casting it to a connectivity manager. That's kind of the first step. This class is how you get information about the networks you're connected to, all that kind of stuff. The next thing that we need to do is if you scroll down, uh, actually maybe it's in register in on active. The next thing you want to do when you want to, you know, monitor changes to the network is you need to create a callback and register a network callback on the connectivity manager. So you'll notice here I'm calling register network callback, but that isn't the only option that's available. You could do register default network callback additionally. The reason I'm using register network callback and not register default network callback is the default network callback works only on, I believe it's API 24 and above. You know, this one's actually easier. It requires less arguments. All it requires is the network uh, callback argument. And it, it provides a bunch of kind of pre-built things that make it more convenient for us. But the problem is it only works on API 24 and above. And in my opinion, that is just not low enough. I, I like to cover at least 21 version uh, API level 21. So what I have here will work on 21. The min SDK will be 21. That's why I put this up here. So I think that's better. You know, 28 isn't super realistic for compatibility. You you want something that's going to work for, I, in my opinion, at least API level 21. So what you do is you build this uh, network request object using this builder and you add capabilities. So these capabilities are the things that you're going to be looking for with the network properties. So for us, I only care if this network connection has internet. So that is the constant that I'm passing here. And of course, if you wanna know what other constants are available, you can just you know go to the documentation or like control click on this 
and uh, probably go to this network capabilities class. And inside here, there will be a bunch of constants and you can take a look at those. Going to the documentation is probably gonna be easier. And it just gives a little description of like, you know, what constant does what. So once we have that, we have our network request, we have our network callback, which I never talked about, so let's actually talk about that. So let's go to this create network callback function. So what does this do? This is the callback that will trigger when properties to your network change or if you uh, you know connect to like a different network or something so there's two override functions that we're using inside of this connectivity manager network callback there's on available and there is on lost so on available obviously gets called when like the device connects to a new network and then that network is passed as an argument here and we can get you know the information about that network i'll come back and talk about that more in just a sec on lost is obviously called when that network connection is lost. So like if I turn off Wi-Fi, like if we go to our demo app or if I turn off cellular data, on lost is called and then that network that is lost is passed as an argument. Okay, now let's go back up to on available. So on available here will pass the network that becomes available, the one that you get connected to. But that's not really useful to us because we need to know like is does this network that I connected to even have internet? That's kind of the thing that we, we care about. So you can get that information by going cm.get network capabilities, passing the network in question, and then you can determine uh, different properties about that network or different properties about those capabilities. So the one that we care about is net capability internet. Does this thing have internet? That's really the only thing that we care about. If it does have internet, so you can see down here, I'm checking to see if that's true, then I wanna add it to our valid networks set. And I'm going to talk about this now. So the way overall that we determine whether or not a network is available, because unavailable could get called for every network that becomes available. So if, if for example, if I have, you know, Wi-Fi enabled and cellular data available, technically there's two networks. They could both have internet and they could both be, you know, passed to the unavailable function here. So how do I know that, you know, I'm connected to one and one of them actually uh, basically, how do I know that I have internet overall on the device? That's the question. So I built kind of a little mechanism for that. So what I have at the top here is a mutable set. So it's a, a set or a list of unique values. And what I do down here in all the unavailable is if one of the networks has internet that's detected by the device and connected to, then it gets added to the valid networks set. And if you scroll down, if you scroll down to on lost here, so when a connection is lost, then it gets removed from that valid networks set. So in both cases, on lost and on available, they also call this check valid networks function. So check valid networks. What that does is up here, I'll scroll up, is, is it calls post value to the live data. So because we're extending live data, we can then post the value, post the Boolean. And if the valid networks size is greater than zero, then th that'll be true. That means that overall, we have a valid network connection. So there could be lots of networks in this set. As long as we have at least one, then I know that I have a valid network and at least one of those has internet. So that's pretty much it. That's the connectivity manager that me, both myself and Alex have been working on a little bit and uh, it's pretty handy it's very simple if you need to monitor connectivity and you want to observe whether you have internet on your app this is a great way to do it it's very simple and I know that uh, I'm sort of just scratching the surface on what the connectivity manager can actually do you can do way more things you can check for different sort of network related properties but um, the only one probably most of you care about and the only one I care about is are we connected to the internet if we're connected to the internet, I can run my use cases as normal. I don't have to display a message telling the user that there is bad connectivity. My app just works. If there's no internet, then I tell the user, hey, there's no internet. And I hopefully can code, code this in such a way that my app will you know, use the cache and still look pretty good. So down below, there will be a link to the code for what we went over in this little demo. Check it out, take it, play with it, observe your network state and uh, try to get some use out of this thing that we built. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, this, uh, the, the demo that I went over earlier in this video, this was actually part of a full course on my website. You can go to codingwithmitch.com and check out the Jetpack Compose MVVM course for beginners. It's completely free. And additionally, I'd like to tell you that currently, well, what I was working on when I actually built this connectivity manager 
is I was working on the next part of that course. So that's the, the part that includes a database cache. So it's gonna be an offline first application. We got use cases. We're going to be monitoring connectivity as you saw and also including unit tests. So a bunch of more kind of advanced features we're basically adding onto the Jetpack Compose app. And that is going to be coming out probably in a few weeks, you should start seeing lectures. So go to codingpitch.com, register an account and you'll be notified when that course is ready. If you liked the video, don't forget to like the video. Leave some kind of engagement down below for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.